and thank you, Jesus. Some will say, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Say, come on. Say, thank you, Jesus. I got so full of God's spirit talking to everybody, Pastor Kim. I'm late to church. Oh, my, my, my. Shame the pastor. Praise the Lord. Happy Super Soul Sunday. Amen. Tell your neighbor, happy Super Soul. Come on, somebody. Welcome to Living Faith. Let's all stand this wonderful morning. Welcome to Living Faith Family Worship Church. If it's your first time or if it's your hundredth time, I want you to know that you're loved. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that you're blessed today. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy February. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God for a January, but thank God for a February. Hallelujah. Now, I know people say, well, February is a love month. Well, I don't know about all that, but uh, I say February is a flow month. Praise the Lord. February is a month that we're going to have flows of miracles, flows of signs, and flows of wonderful wonders. Hallelujah. What kind of flow, Pastor? A flow of just the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You picked a great Sunday to come to church. Hallelujah. Now, we just had a great first service. We had people here just loving on Jesus in Espanol. Hallelujah. And they were just a la bandera, a Cristo. I mean, they were just having a great time. And we just say thank you, Jesus, amen, for our first service. And we thank you, Jesus, for our second service. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I call you healed, and I call you whole in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, Mr. Coy's in the house. We had a baby. Lindsay has a beautiful, beautiful baby. Eight pounds, eight ounces, nine ounces. Beautiful, beautiful baby. And she is right where she needs to be with the baby. And uh, I'm thinking that she sends her men to church. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. So we send our love and greetings. She might be watching online right now. We just send our love and our greetings. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Listen, church, we've had a week of miracles. Someone say miracles. Miracles. Thank to everyone that kept Pastor Kim and Tiffany and everybody in prayer. Last Sunday, they, they had a celebration with Grandpa, 80, 81, going on 82 years strong. They released him by faith, and Jesus received him, hallelujah, and he's in the courts of faith with all the, the people of faith. He was a retired Air Force uh, veteran, and he lived a beautiful, prosperous life, married, I mean, half a century. I mean, he just has grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. I mean, just, he has fruit everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord supernaturally spoke through, through your pastor in that service this past Sunday evening. And I said, you know, the world talks about Hall of Fame, right? People are known today by the Hall of Fame because of their, what, talents? Of how good they can, you know, act, how good they can perform. There's even, in the Bible, there's a Hall of Faith. You know, there's people that, that have marched the courts of faith, and God has honored them in Hebrews and has called them the men of faith, the women of faith. But there's also people like we have today that they're the hall of heroes, amen, who have given their lives, who have sacrificed their lives, who have served our country, and that's our military. And I just wanted to say we have, you know, a host of angels all around us that are heroes, amen, and, and they are just for us, and he's one of them, and he's, he's just thanking the Lord that we're honoring Jesus, and so thank everyone for praying for Pastor Kim and Tiffany while they just had this celebrating time with their family, hallelujah, how do you, how do you say it's celebrating, Pastor, we should be grieving and sorrow, sorrow, we, well, we do have sorrow, and yes, we do cry, and yes, we do grieve, but joy comes in the morning, come on, somebody, you see, believers have a different outlook. Come on, somebody. We know that if we die here in the body, if we're absent, absent, or dead in the body, we are present with the Lord. Come on. So we know that, that death isn't the end. Come on, somebody. It is the beginning of eternal life and the existence of the rewards with Jesus. So I say this also in love and honor of the Reese family. Who is, who, is, who is also celebrating the life of Mr. Beto, who, who Uncle Mose, everyone loves Uncle Mose here in town. I mean, they got the best, the best, the best. And so we're just speaking our faith and our love and comfort to that family right now in the name of Jesus. Here, lift a hand right now. Father, we lift up 
that family. And we declare the Holy Spirit is comforting them in the name of Jesus. Bless Lewis as he ministers tonight in music. Bless the Catholic Church as they minister. Lord, just bless the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ during their homegoing service. Let them be encouraged and let them be in strength today, knowing that there is eternity up ahead in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. amen. We love the Gonzalez family, Criselda and Lolly and Rachel and the whole family. They're with Mama right now. Mama's in the hospital. She's, she's, let me just say this. She is, she is a step ahead for her miracle. Someone say, a miracle in the name of Jesus. Mama has been diagnosed with some cancer, and uh, we're, we're, we're good to know that that has a name because that name's going to bow at the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to speak to Mama Elvira Reese and speak in the name of Jesus that that cancer is bowing right yes. now in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. And so Lolly and all of them, they're with the Mama right now, and they're just praying, they're believing. They're right where they need to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. They called and they said, Pastor, we don't want to miss church. Oh, Pastor, I said, well, you're going to miss tomorrow. You're going to be with your family. What pastor is going to tell their congregation don't come to church? This pastor is. Well, they need to be in faith with their mama. Come on, somebody. We can pray the prayer of faith right here where we are. We are, we just did. And they are standing in agreement where they are. They're watching actually online so they know we're talking about them. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen. I know you're standing, but I'm standing too. Praise the Lord. It's been a week of miracles. Amen. This past Sunday, my father and I and others, we went to go pray for an individual we were called upon, and they live there in Pearsall. Praise the Lord for Pearsall. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we went and we stepped into a home, and this man was bound to his bed. Been in his bed how long, Dad? Six months, Six months bound to his bed. Yes, That's half a year. You were there, Pastor Kim? You were there, Mama? Six months bound to a bed because of sickness, because of disease, because of infirmity. Brother Rokas has been coming to our church. He knows the Smith family from Dilly. He's from Pearsall. He knows this family, Jose, Luis, Luis, no, no, Martinez. And he says, you need to go pray for him. He's been coming for almost a month now to this church, Living Faith. Has been traveling an hour round trip every Sunday. Come on. He hasn't missed in one full month. Come on, somebody. Amen. We went after, after service because God told us to go. Come on, somebody. Someone say, our steps are ordered in the name of Jesus. Sometimes he says go. Sometimes he says send the word. Come on. Don't get your feelings hurt if you, the pastor don't go lay hands on you. Come on. Sometimes the Lord says go. Sometimes he says send the word. Hallelujah. But that day he said, go. And we went. My dad and I, we prayed the prayer of faith. Come on. It wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a, 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 a long prayer. It was a prayer of faith. Praise the Lord. And we prayed the prayer of faith. The next day he got up and he went to the valley. Come on, somebody. Amen. Church, six months. Here's Mother Rokas. He can tell you the, the story. This ain't this is, no, no, no little story. This is a miracle. Come on, somebody. And he says, and when I get back from the valley, I'm going to live in faith, family, worship, church. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. There is a God, and he's alive. Hallelujah. Well, man, pastor, you're anointed. No, it ain't about the pastor. It ain't about, it's about faith. Come on, somebody. It's about going and saying, God, we speak the word, and you shall do the work. For six months, he was bound, arrested to that bed. But the next day, mama, he got up, ate himself a taco, and he went to the valley, praise the Lord, a four-hour trip. Come on, Yachty. And he said, God is real. Come on, somebody. It's been a month of miracles. Come on, somebody. February is the month of the flow of the Holy Spirit. If you receive this flow month, come on, somebody. You're going to receive victories in your life. You're going to receive victories and, and signs and wonders in your life in the name of Jesus. We're standing right now for Matt's grandma. His, his dad, Adam, is in this church from San Antonio. And he's here standing in proxy of his mama who's in the ICU right now. And doctors are saying one thing, but God has the ultimate say. And we're declaring the same God that healed that man that was bound to 
his bed six months. The same man that told Fernie, Fernando Gonzalez, who had to have eye surgery, he came for prayer on Wednesday, and he went Thursday, and the doctor said, there's no more surgery. Your eye is healed. Come on, somebody. There is miracles, signs and wonders. I declare Grandma Sanchez healed from San Antonio at the Baptist Methodist, where she is in the name of Jesus. I declare healing in this house in Jesus' name. Now, come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, we're going to have church. It ain't no normal, normal Super Bowl Sunday church. It's a Super Soul Sunday church. Come on. We're going to give honor to, and glory to God Almighty. Now, Lewis is at work. He's right there next door. He's watching online. Lord, we just declare the correction facility blessed. We thank you for all the, the workers and everybody doing their visitation. We call them blessed. And we thank you that Lewis has raised champions on this praise team that could lead worship and lead praise in the name of Jesus. So, to God be the glory. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Come on. Come on. We welcome the Holy Spirit today and we say have your way in Jesus' name. Let's honor Jesus this morning. Thank you. Goes to the left, goes to the 
for nothing if he goes to the rocks. He goes to the rocks. We're going to dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, we go to the left. And then we go to the right. We go to the right. We're going to jump, 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 jump in the river. We're going to jump, 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 jump in the river. And if he goes to the left, Goes to the left, and if he goes to the right, then we go to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout in the river. We're gonna shout, 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 shout one more time. And if he goes to the left, he goes to the left, and if he goes to the right, he goes to the right. We're gonna dance, 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 dance in the river. We're gonna dance, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left. Go to the left, and if he goes to the right, we go to the right. We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the middle. We're gonna jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, he goes to the left, and if he goes to the right, he goes to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout in the middle. We're gonna shout, shout, everybody. And these cries out to these cries out to these cries out to these cries out to me, so we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. And he cries out, he cries out to me, he cries out, he cries out to me, so we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. So we're falling again to deeper waters.
Someone say, I'm free today. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was lost, but now I've been found. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I was bound, but now I've been free. Hallelujah. No more shackles are holding me bound. Thank you, Jesus. God is with me. Who can be against me? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price on Calvary. He walked 1,100 steps in my place so that you and I could have eternal, listen, eternal salvation. It is because of the blood and because of his broken body that we today stand today free and forgiven. Amen? Come on. We stand today free and forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. God forgave me, a sinner. God forgave me in, 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 in my dirtiness, in my filth, in, in my lack, in my doubt, in my fear, in, in my shame, in my guilt. God forgave me. He forgave me. Come on. Think of where God has pulled you out of. You know, Pastor Kim has said this many times. God has done so much, maybe what you haven't even seen yet. He's done more for you than you haven't even realized yet. The little things God has done. The beautiful things God has done. And here's the great promise. He's going to keep doing it. Amen. Amen. He's going to keep giving. He's going to keep loving. He's going to keep giving us that opportunity to say yes to him. I want you to take your seat to the house of God. Hallelujah. What a blessing. We're going to come before the Lord and pray and have a time of communion. It's the first Sunday of February. And this month, February, we're going to be coming before the Lord's table as we always do the first Sunday. And we do this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said to his disciples, do this as you remember me. He gathered his disciples and he told his disciples that I'm leaving, but I'm giving my life away so that you would be able to find the way. He said, my body would be broken, bruised, torn apart, but you will be whole. You will be healed. You will be set free. He said, my blood, I'm offering it. I'm giving it to you as the ultimate sacrifice. So no longer do we have to sacrifice a bull, a ram, or any other sacrifice. Jesus Christ became the ultimate sacrifice so that our sin, the sin that was committed in Genesis, that devoured and destroyed and disconnected our life with God. Sin did that. Disobedience did that. Eve, Adam failed in Genesis. 
by eating of the fruit and separated creation from their creator. And because of that sin, sin lived hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years in the old covenant. Prophets began to prophesy, there comes a king. There comes the high priest. There comes the Lamb of God who will remove the sin of the world. And he came and he lived among us all. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among the brethren. Jesus Christ not only came to die, but he also came to live. Come on, somebody. He came to live in me. He came to live in you. He came to be in the church. He came to help the church. Come on. He came to build his church. Come on. And he did that by his sacrifice. They gathered at the courtyard and they said, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. They said, give us Barabbas. They said, we'll accept sin and not a savior. That's what we said. But pastor, I wasn't there. No, we were there. And Jesus looking at sinners, looking at failures, looking at people that did not know, said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he said, I'm giving them my life so that they could no longer be separated from the Father. Christ didn't just come to die, but he came to live. He came to live, I say. And he said, I give you my body so that you can live healed. I said, I give you my blood so no longer are you bound for hell, but you're bound to heaven. And I wash your sin away. And I give you my blood. It's a free gift. And it's given to all for those that accept him as Lord and Savior. Thomas was in one of the meetings with Jesus and said, Father, we don't know the way. Jesus, we don't know the way. And Jesus said, you do. I am the way. And I'm the truth. And I'm the only life. And there's no one that will ever enter into heaven. Only through salvation through Jesus. The Bible says he was like a silent lamb. He kept his mouth shut as he walked to Calvary, carrying that 300-pound cross on his back. Nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a crown of thorns that pierced to his skull pieces of his cheek torn off his body torn apart by 39 lashes and a spear in his side Jesus didn't only come to die but he came to live how does he live in us today he said bring people to church he said have communion and let them remember what I have done and what I'm going to do. Because God didn't come through Jesus just to die. He came to live. Amen. So I want you to accept this communion as the ushers are coming right now. I want you to accept it by faith. And together we'll receive it. sacrifice and a moment of the ultimate love please distribute the elements let's just have this music just like this I feel, I feel led to pray Father we come to you in the name of Jesus 
And Lord, as we commit our lives to you and as we commune with you this morning, we remember your life. We remember your love. And we remember what you leave in us. So Father, we take this cracker and we take this cup, the cracker that represents your body. You said in your word in Matthew 26 and 26 as you gathered your disciples, you said, take, eat, this is my body, it's broken for you. You said, take, drink, this is my new covenant for you. It's, it's, the, it's the blood that washes the sin away. You said, take and, 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 and receive it. For I have freed you from sickness and infirmities and I freed you from death and Hades, hell and separation from our eternal creator because of the blood. So Lord, we know that your blood ran red and because of your blood, we have the grace of God upon our lives to have communion. We are privileged to come to your table this morning and honor you, Jesus. Because you didn't just come to die, but you came to live. Hallelujah. Please, Miss Kim. Right now there is a uh, anointing and for healing. And I know by the spirit there's people in here that you've been diagnosed with something. The doctors have said something over you. And by the Spirit of the Lord, I know this. As you receive your communion by faith, you will be healed. And you'll see a miracle. Your next doctor visit, what was there, won't be there anymore. And you will have, you will have a noted supernatural miracle that people will be able to physically see on you. That you will be able to show people, this is what I had. But by the grace of God, it's gone. So as you take your communion in a few, as Pastor Mark guides us, receive your healing. Amen. Come on, someone say, I receive. Come on, just by faith in the name of Jesus. I receive 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 in the name of Jesus. Come on, hold up your cracker right now. Say, I receive in the name of Jesus my healing. I receive it in the name of Jesus. You didn't just come to die, but you came to live. You came to live, and you came to live. You said you came to give us life, life in abundance. So I speak abundance, blessings upon this family of God. In the name of Jesus. Take the cracker right now with your right hand and break and eat. Your holy father. Take this juice, this cup. Father, this cup represents the New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles. Revelation it represents the prophecy and the promise fulfilled. It represents the forgiveness of sin and the washing and the cleansing of my life. Because of your blood, I've been set free. Because of your blood, we have been forgiven. It is by the blood. Please take and receive my faith. In the name of Jesus. Now just lift your hands where you are. Father, we release by faith. Our faith in the name of Jesus for the healing virtue power of a mighty God. As Pastor Kim released the word to each and every one of us about that healing, we claim it in the name of Jesus. We claim it for Evira Reese. We claim
claim it for Grandma Sanchez. We claim it in the name of Jesus for any other individual that's here right now that needs and those that are viewing around the world. We claim healing. We claim victory. We claim the love of your blood. In the mighty name of the Lord. And everyone said amen. Come on, somebody. Come on, give the Lord a great hand clap. Let's all stand to our feet. Come on this day. Come on, let's all stand to our feet. Let's just honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're honored in this place, Jesus. And we honor you, Father, for you are God and you are good. Let's sing one worship song as we prepare to minister the word of God and bless the children. We bless you, Father. Love like a hurricane, I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. Hallelujah. When all of a sudden, and I am unaware of these afflictions, he claims by glory. Yes, Lord. And I realize just for you are and how good your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. Yes, Lord. somebody's hand there right next to you and tell them God bless you. I want to invite all the children at this time to please come. All the students. Hallelujah. Please come at this time and let me pray over everybody. Hallelujah. We're so happy to have Abby here with us from California. Give me a high five. Welcome home. And we're so glad you're with us. Hallelujah. God is great. You're going to have some great time with your friends and and everybody, come on down, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know it might be many of your first time with us, but, you know, find somebody that's been here for a thousand times, and he'll be okay, and you'll be all right, all right? Thank you, Jesus. 
All right. Well, this is what we trained our children. When we pray over you, God is going to give you a gift. So you look up to him and you lift your hands. Father, we bless our wonderful students. And we thank you, Lord, for their life and their love. Lord, we bless them as you every moment you had a chance to bless children, Father, to bless your students. Lord, you pick them up and you bless them. So, Lord, we bless them in Jesus' name. We thank you for their teachers and all the volunteers that are helping in their teachings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, give high fives. Give high fives. High fives. I like high fives. Thank you to the praise team. What a wonderful job our praise team has done. Give them a great hand clap. Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Well, what a blessing. What a blessing and what a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Well, church, look, we got a sea of blue. Amen. Our beautiful blue chairs are, are in, well, just a few of them, praise the Lord. And we got more coming. Someone say, blue is on the menu. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good timing, right? Praise the Lord. That's right. We got more coming. We got our first 50 in. And uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our first 50, and we got 50 coming, and we're believing God that we'll be able to order another 50 by, by, by this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. How much is 50, Pastor? About 1750. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Now, we got 1750 for these 50. Do you think God's going to bring in the other? Absolutely. Come on. Praise the Lord. We already got about close to $1,000 for the second batch. Come on. So that means we just need about seven. You might be in this house. Say, I'll take care of that right now. Praise the Lord. I'm that kind of pastor. That I got that bold faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. You might be here. I know it smiles on the heart of the Father when, when one does great things. And I know he has a great smile when everyone does their part. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, God is faithful, and we are so great to be in his house this beautiful Super Soul Sunday. Amen. Tell your neighbor you're a champion. Yeah, look at somebody else say, I'm a champion too. Praise the Lord. That's right. I looked in the mirror today, and I said, creating a champion in me. I mean, I just sang that. I just sang, I'm a champion. I'm a champion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I say that because that's what God calls us. He calls us champions. I like how you say it in Spanish. I mean, it sounds more rugged, champion. I mean, it, oh, what, campeón, right? Oh, campeón. There you go. Sorry. It sounds good. I mean, it sounds like an outdoor person, you know. Praise the Lord. I like it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, uh, the champion I am. Someone say, the champion I am. And that's why we're here today, because it's Super Soul Sunday. I know stadiums are filling up. I know homes and parties are filling up. I know people are just calling everybody. You're coming over. Who's bringing the chicken wings and who's bringing this? Who's bring oh, but today we're going to Super Soul our Sunday. Come on. Today we're going to make sure our soul has the, 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 the fight in us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're not letting nothing distract us from the house of God. We're not letting nothing take us away from the miracles and the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. His house fills up to overflow. Our first service was a blessing. Had this place just filled up with glory. Hallelujah. And this second service, double portion. I say double portion. Come on, somebody. Double anointing. Come on, somebody. Double blessing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a super soul. Every Sunday is a super soul Sunday. We've been declaring that this year, 2016, is going to be a year of the supernatural. How we're going to read his word. How we're going to speak his word. How we're going to believe his word. How we're going to pray his word. We speak the word and the Lord does the work. Amen. It is his job to do the work, not my job. It is my job to speak his promises. It is my job to speak his blessings. It is my job to speak about the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when you do that, his work is being fulfilled. I just took a few moments beginning of the service to talk about just a few miracles that took place this week. A few. 
Fernando came Wednesday needing some laser surgery. He's had a multiple uh, surgeries on that on that right eye, and we declared him healed and whole. Brother Cecil, who's in the valley right now taking care of some things, he brought him here to the altar and said, we need to pray by faith. We prayed by faith. He went to the doctor on Thursday, and the doctor said, no more surgery. Come on, somebody. Sister Elia is by faith standing here today. She knows that. She went in one day, had, had a cataract surgery. She was scheduled, Yachty, to have two surgeries. Uh, weeks apart and she went and she had one eye had surgery and then she went in for the checkup on the other and they said well you don't need surgery because the other high is completely healed 2020 come on somebody <laughs> to God be the glory to God be the glory and to God be the glory. My, my dad is faithfully taking an individual to the hospital and having all these checkups on a weekly basis. And before, listen, before, and I'm going to tell you right now, before my dad wasn't with this man, there was all these bad reports and bad reports and bad reports. My dad, by faith, begins to take this man to the hospital, begins to pray with this man. Come on, somebody. And every report is a good report. Come on, somebody. It's not about my dad driving him. Come on. It's not about how great my dad looks how slim and tender he is it's not about that how good he puts his money it's not about that come on somebody it's about the faith of God inside a servant of God hallelujah so what is that that's a champion in us come on champion not gonna sit down let go let God let 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 let, let everything just 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 be no champion's gonna let go and let God hallelujah that's a champion right there and so this morning I wanted to speak about the champion we are. We are champions. And I want us to go to the book of Romans, please, chapter 8, to begin a foundation of the scripture before we continue the teaching in the book of Numbers. Romans chapter 8. It's going to be on the screen for you, but if you have your Bibles, you can turn there to Romans chapter 8. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and then Romans. Paul is speaking here. Now this word champion is not a, it's not a scary word, you know. I remember growing up, how many of you know Popeye? Anyone know Popeye? Yes. That cartoon Popeye? He was telling us how to be a champion. He said, eat what? Spinach. Spinach. And you'll be a champion. You'll be strong. <laughs> I mean, just, you know. Da, 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 da. I mean, just eat your spinach. I don't like spinach. I never liked spinach. Kim tried to give me some spinach salad. I said, what are those leaves in my salad? I said, what is that? Then she tried baby spinach. What? They're just small leaves. I don't eat leaves. You want to be a champion, you got to eat this? Yeah. All right. Growing up, mom and dad said, you got to eat your Brussels sprouts. You got to eat your greens. You got to eat all this. You got to be a champion. You got to get strong. I don't like it, Mom. I don't like it, Dad. Boy, doesn't know I come in. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'd eat it. Training me how to be a champion. You go on television. There are people telling you how to be a champion. There's breakfast for champions. Come on, somebody. They're called Wheaties. Come on, somebody. The breakfast of a champion, huh? I mean, you got you got all that, right? I like Cheerios with Kool-Aid. That's my champion cereal. Praise the Lord. And so you got everyone telling about spinach and Brussels sprouts and, and, and Wheaties and all that, how to become a champion. But you also got God giving us some things in this scripture about how we as believers, as Christians, can also have the champion in us come out. Amen. Now let's read this verse or verses in Romans chapter 8. Now before we read, Tell your neighbor I call you healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. I feel better already. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who then can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but has delivered him us uh, from us all. How shall he not with himself freely give us all things who shall bring a charge against God's elect is it God who justifies who is he who condemns it is Christ who died and, con and, and who condemns it is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is 
even at the right hand of God, making intercession for you and for me. Someone say, Jesus Christ is praying. Yes, he is. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, sore, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, what things? In all these, what things? Persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, sword. What things? Death. What things? Shame. What things? Worry. Come on. He said, but yet in all these things, we are more. Someone say more. We are more than conquerors. Someone say, I'm more than a conqueror. Say, I'm a champion. See, God has his promises in his word that teach and these are, this is breakfast for a champion. This is our Wheaties. Hallelujah. This is our spinach. Come on, somebody. This is the meat and the milk of the word of God. And if we're going to be a champion in our world today and have a super soul Sunday, come on. We have to understand there's some things that we have to do. There's some things that we have to say. There's some things that we have to be in together with. But yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, angels, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is Paul saying here? He is saying that there is nothing stronger than the Lord. He's saying there's nothing that is stronger than nor height nor depth. Come on. Things now, things to come. Come on. No, nor situ this situation that nothing can separate us from the love of God when we're champions. When we are more than conquerors. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers is in the Old Covenant. It's, it's, it's a book there at the very beginning of your Bible. In the book of Numbers, chapter 13, let me just lay out a foundation of where we're going. There are people in slavery, God's people, the Israelites, and they're under the grip of Pharaoh. And they've been there for numbers of years. They've been bound to work for Pharaoh, creating his kingdom. Moses was also brought up in that palace. Moses moved away from that palace. God began to work in Moses. God then began to speak to Moses and tell Moses, go back to Egypt and go tell Pharaoh to let my people go and you're going to be the leader. Moses begins to begin to speak about all these excuses. I can't speak right. I don't have an education. I, I, I don't even know really what's going on here. Who do I tell them who sent me? He began to lay out all these excuses why he could not do what God had commanded him to do. But at the end of the day, God has his way. Come on, somebody. At the end of the day, God has, because God chooses his champions. He chooses his champions. You see, he changed Moses, who once worried, and now he carries a torch of a warrior. He changed Moses, who once doubted now carries the torch of faith. Come on. So see, that same God is speaking to us today about the champion we are. Here in Numbers chapter 13, starting with verse 25, 
And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they had departed and came back to Moses and Aaron, all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran, Kadesh. They brought back word to them that all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, they said, we went to that land where you sent us. And yes, it truly flows with milk and honey. And here is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in that land are very strong and their cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak, and, and they're there, the Amalekites. They dwell in that land in the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites. They dwell in the mountain, the Canaanites dwell in that sea along the banks of the Jordan. And then Caleb, verse 30, quieted the people. And he said this before Moses. He says, let us go up now at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with them said, we are not able to go up against these people. They are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. You ever seen a television show? Wah, wah, wah. That's where I hear this in this story. When they gave the people a bad report. And the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone to spy is the land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom, who we saw are men. They are of great stature. They're giants. And there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak. They came from all the giants, and we are like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Father, this is your word. It's truth. It brings forth life. Let us understand your word. Let it become rhema, revelation to us. And it speaks clearly about the champion in us. And everyone said amen. amen. Here are some people who have a chance to be in the land of milk and honey, representing the victory and the blessing. Milk and honey. Victory and the blessing of God. Victory is our production today. The blessing is our continual future. Come on, somebody. We are blessed today. Our children are blessed tomorrow. Hallelujah. We have victory today, and we continue to walk in a victorious life. So Jesus Christ is giving these children who are the Israelites the blessing. In other words, he just handed them the title deed of the land that is theirs, the land of Canaan. Now they've heard of this land while they were in slavery. They heard of the land that was truly flowing with milk and honey, the land of the freedom, the land of the blessing how they longed to be in that land, but yet they were bound to Pharaoh. So Moses comes and says, loose my people. And now the people are in the wilderness. They've seen God move in mighty ways. They were hungry one day and God sent million quails. Come on, somebody. That's a hunting trip, praise the Lord. They were thirsty. God opened up some rocks and had water fountains come up. Come on, somebody. That's our God. They were sweating, they were hot. God brought a cloud to give them shade. They were cold and God brought a pillar of fire to keep them warm. Come on. God provided for his people. He was taking them to the land that they heard about, the land that they read about, the land that only was in a distance, but yet they had never yet set foot in that land. Yet they were now out of slavery, out of their area of bondage, and now on their way to the land of victory and blessing, milk and honey. So here they are at the Kadesh, which is the border between where they were and where they need to be. They were in the wilderness facing some things in their, their life. But they needed to be in the land that God had promised them 
that was theirs, which was Canaan. Now, I've heard many ministers and even pastors preach on heaven as a Canaan. Heaven is your Canaan. Heaven is your Canaan. Uh, heaven is no Canaan. Heaven is, is the ultimate blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Canaan, you still have your victories. Canaan, you still have your blessings. But Canaan, you still have to fight. In heaven, you don't have to fight no more. Praise the Lord. So I just covered that. Thank you, Jesus. But see, God gave Canaan to the children of Israel. Even, even though there were people living in that land. Notice, they were illegal residents. Come on. They were in that land illegally. That land was the land of God. And that land was the land meant for the Israelites. They had the deed in hand. That is my property. Come on, somebody. So, God knew that that land was already inhabited by giants, people. Why would God now send people to a land that already has residents? Because God knew that that land flowing with milk and honey, which is what? Victory and blessings was not for the, listen, illegals. Come on, somebody. It wasn't for them. It wasn't for those that were operating illegally. Come on, somebody. It was for the sons and the daughters of God. Hallelujah. It was for the blessing and the victories of who God has chosen to be champions. That is your property. That is your land. It's not theirs. So they're at Kadesh, the border place. They can see it. They can smell it. They can almost taste it. So Moses chooses 12 leaders. Praise God for leaders. Moses chooses 12 leaders and says, I want you to go and spend time in that land of Canaan. And I want you to come back and I want you to bring back with, with, your, with yourself fruit and reports of what it is, how it is, what you saw and what you tasted. So we can go then and take that land. So, 12 spies leave for 40 days. Some will say 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. They were still in the wilderness while those, 40 lead, those 12 leaders spent 40 days in Canaan observing, being blessed, partaking, being in the presence of in all of what God is going to give us and do. Ten of those leaders, in the midst of the blessing, saw the inhabitants. They saw the people. They saw the walls. They saw the fortified cities. They saw the giants. So after 40 days had passed, they ran back, and they met Moses, and they met Aaron, and the entire Congregation. This is millions of people. And they start the report as truly this is the land of milk and honey, victory and blessings, as if God would lie. God does not lie. When God said it in Exodus, I'm going to give you a place called Canaan, flowing with milk and honey, God means what he says. Come on. When God tells you he's going to set you free, he means what he says. Come on. When God says he's going to heal you completely, he means what he says. When God says he's going to bless you and bless your family and bless your children's children, he means what he says. Come on. When God says he's going to restore you and restore your marriage and restore your family, he means what he says. Come on. When he says he's going to completely set you on fire for him and no longer you're going to be turning back to the world, he means what he says. He's raising a champion inside of you. He's developing a champion inside of you. And so these 12 spies come back and they're all saying, yes, truly, this is the land of milk and honey. Yes, this is the blessing. Yes, 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 yes. And I see Joshua and I see Caleb and I see the other 10 so on fire about what they saw. They even brought some fruit and they said, look at this fruit. Look at the blessing on this food. 
Look at all that we can obtain. And then one leader spoke up and he said, but. He said, nevertheless, but. Even though the land is flowing with milk and honey, even though there's a victory, even though there's a blessing, even though we have the deed of the property, there's giants in that land. There's people already occupying that land. There's no way to get in through the river, nor the mountain, nor the valley. Every inch of property is already taken by the inhabitants of Amalek. Six generations are already living on that property. How are we going to take over a property that's filled with people and people that are greater than we are. And so the Bible says, you just read it, they brought back a bad report. And in the midst of their bad report, Caleb comes near Moses and says to Moses, shh, Moses, don't listen to their voices. Listen to what God has told you. He said, go take possession. Mo Caleb was 45 years young. Praise God for a young buck. Hallelujah. 45 years young, he was in his prime year. He was strong. 45 years young, and he said, I can do this with Christ. I can do all things through Christ. He said, surely, surely it's, it's, it's occupied right now. Surely there's some giants. Surely they're bigger than I. Surely they have more talent than me. Come on. Surely they have more knowledge than me. Come on. Surely they, they have more wisdom than me. Surely they, sure, sure. But they don't have my God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yeah, they, 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 they may look the part. They may look big. They might have the certificate, and they might even hang it on their wall, but they don't serve the God we serve. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We can go through any kind of natural counseling. We can go through any kind of natural help, but there ain't no help like Jesus Christ that can provide. Hallelujah. Someone says, I used to get high in the world. I tell you this, there ain't no high like the most. High, praise the Lord. Because once you've had Jesus, come on, somebody, there's nothing else you'll want. Hallelujah. He creates that champion inside of you. Like that champion was in young Caleb at 45 years young. And he said, Shh. He shushed doubt. He shushed fear. He shushed unbelief. He shushed all the negative. He shushed all the sickness. He shushed all the bad negative reports. And he said, don't believe them. Believe God. You have the deed in your hand. Praise the Lord. How's somebody going to come, Mom, and tell us, you can't have this property? You can't tell me. I have the deed to this property. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Now, if you're just renting, they can tell you to get out. It's not yours. It's not yours. But if you have the deed in your hand, nobody can tell you nothing. Come on, somebody. You ain't your sprinters that morning, praise the Lord. Nobody tell you nothing. That's your property. Come on. But see, what happened to these spies? Had a bad report. Negativity will always cause you to fail. You know what negative does? It kills you. Negative people will never enter into their milk and their honey. Arrows are being shot out this morning. If you're negative, you need to give your heart to God more and change your mouth. Change your vision. Because you'll never own anything. Whew, I just said that. Thank you, Jesus. But that's the truth. That's the truth. Those ten spies were negative. And God said to them, you're not going to enjoy your milk and honey. He told them that. He even told Moses that. Mm. called of God 
Come on. He said, Moses, you're going to die here too because you believe the negative words. But Joshua and Caleb, they're going to live and they're going to enjoy the land because God is creating a champion inside of them. Joshua was 85 years young. Come on, somebody. 40 years past, Miss Kim. They spent 40 days in that land of promise. And then they spent 40 years in the land of wondering and wandering, in worry and shame. They even said, let's raise another leader and let's go back to Egypt. Hmm. That's just like church splitters. Hmm. Come on, somebody. That's just like wolves with sheep clothing. Hmm. That's just like ministers and people in the house of God or wherever you are in your work that try to split what God has tried to obtain in your life. I say no, devil. We got the deed, hallelujah. We got, and what is our deed? Come on, somebody, the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our deed right here, praise the Lord. Come on. You have something to say? Anybody have something to say about the word? I got to have, I'll have something to say about the word of God about that situation. Come on. You have an issue in your life? The word of God has something to say about that, praise the Lord. You have, oh, okay, the word of God has a promise for that, praise the Lord. I got possession over that. I got possession over that. When I get a bad report, I got a deed. I got a promise that has possession over what God has in store for us. Because God is raising up this super soul Sunday, a champion in us. A champion in us. Daniel was in the lion's den. God closed those mouths of those lions because there was a champion in him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't bow to, to things around them. They didn't bow because the world was bowing. They said, no, we're going to rise and stand in the midst of the fire. Yeah, the kitchen was hot, but yet they stayed still, and the champion rose inside of them. You see, the champion won't let you bow when everyone else is bowing. Come on. Champion in you won't let you give in while everyone else is giving in to things. Come on. Champion in you won't let you surrender to guilt and shame and neglect and all the negative things in our world. The champion in you will be bold and say, no, devil, you shall not have my family. Come on. He's a champion in you. Hallelujah. He's taking us from a worrying life, Miss Kim, to a warrior life. Hallelujah. He's taking us out of sickness and into healing in the name of Jesus. He's taking us out of that poor mentality into a prosperity mindset. Hallelujah. Prosperity isn't having millions of dollars in your bank. Prosperity known as is Proverbs 10, 22. He makes you rich and he adds no sorrow. But I tell you what, he'll add to your bank account. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He'll add to your life. Hallelujah. It's that champion inside of you. It's that champion. Caleb and Joshua, they said at Caleb was 85 years young. Thank you, Jesus, for a young man at 45 and a young man still at 85. And he said to Joshua, when Joshua went to that land, he said, he said, Joshua, give me that land that I told Moses. I want the mountain. I want the biggest and I want the baddest um, uh, giant there is. Is that a word, bad, baddest? I don't know, whatever. Praise the Lord. I want the biggest giant there is. See, he could take on that big giant at 45 where he was. But even at the age of 85 where people said, no, you can't because of your age. No, you can't because of your disabilities. No, you can't because of your issues. No, you can't because of your failures. No, you can't because of, of what, what, what you did. No, you can't. No, you can't. He didn't let any disability. Come on. He didn't let any negativity. Come on, somebody. He didn't let nothing own him but the presence of God. And he said to that, that mountain, I'm going to take it. I'm going to have it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did Caleb want that mountain? Because he wanted that mountain to oversee the blessings of God. He wanted that mountain to also see what God took him out of, which was that valley, which was that wilderness. God is going to put people on the mountaintop to remind you about what he took you out of and to remind you of your Canaan, which is your milk and your honey. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The place of blessing and the place of victory. Someone say there's a champion in us. 
It's 12 o'clock and I'm done, but I need to run by these quick points that Tommy worked so hard to give. Five points. I'm going to run by them real quick, Tommy, in two minutes. The first point we have as a champion is that we have a foresight. We have vision. Champions carry vision. They don't see just today. They see their tomorrow. Caleb didn't just see his today. He saw their tomorrow. He saw the victory. Number two, you have to be a man of faith or a person of faith. There has to be faith in you. There has to be faith. Faith is what fuels your fire. Faith is what gives you that, that, that fuel that continues to march forward. If you have faith, you're always moving forward. Come on, somebody. In the midst of any failures, you can always move forward if you have faith. And, and most people think they have to have faith the size of the mountain. But God is just asking you to have faith the size of a mustard seed just to walk on water. Come on, somebody. So don't look at having big old mountain faith. Come on. Don't wait to be in the ministry 20 years and then start something. Start where you are. Hallelujah. Be a person of faith. Number three, you have to be fearless. Praise the Lord. What does that mean, Pastor? That means, listen, you're not going to let nothing take. You, you're not going to have a grasshopper men complex. Come on. These ten spies, they had a grasshopper complex. The Bible says that they saw themselves as grasshoppers. They were speaking for the giants. The giants didn't even see them. They saw themselves. They didn't see the God that was inside. They didn't see the champion that was inside. They saw a grasshopper. How do you say it in Spanish, Mom? Un chapulín. Un Chapulín Colorado. Remember that movie? That show, Chapulín Colorado? They saw Un Chapulín. When God sees a, a com, un campeón. Un Chapulín, un campeón. That should have been the title, Tommy. Hallelujah. We're champions. You have to live fearless. 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 What's that, what does that mean, Pastor? You know what? I'm going to take that step of faith. I'm going to take it. Number four, a foreknowledge. Foreknowledge is knowing what the Word of God says. You have a knowing already. You know you won. Come on. You already know the battle has been taken care of. Come on. You have a foreknowledge already. You already stepped into the battle knowing that the victory is yours. Hallelujah. You have a foreknowledge. And number five, you must face and fight. Come on, somebody. You must face it and you must fight it. Hallelujah. You got to face it and you got to fight it. Do you, listen, do you think when Joshua and Caleb marched into and that crossed that Jordan, they walked into that, that, that land of Cain, do you think everything was just handed to them? Listen, people, if things are just handed to you, what, what's, what's the worth of it? Things aren't just handed to you because you have to carry the value of it. Come on, salvation wasn't just handed to us. It took a value of life to sacrifice it. Things aren't just handed to you. Why is it so easy for children just to throw their clothes on the floor? Because they didn't work for it. There goes mama, there goes daddy. Oy, oy. Or however they are, you know, picking it up, hanging it, washing it. Listen, children, thank you, Jesus. But once they start working, come on. Once they start buying their own stuff, huh? Once they start, huh? huh? Come on, somebody. Once they got to pay their water bill, they're not going to be watching every day, praise the Lord. They're going to try not to get dirty, amen, and hang it up. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Come on, somebody. Amen. They're not going to be taking baths every day. No, you need to, praise the Lord. <laughs> I love them. They do. Uh, we all do. Thank you, Jesus. Our water bill's blessed. You got to face and you got to fight. Caleb, he had to face, he had to fight. 80 years young, he couldn't back out of that mountaintop. He knew that was a land of milk and honey that God promised him because he had the deed. He knew it was his, therefore he had to face it. And he had to fight for it. That's why Paul said, I fight the good fight of faith. I fight the good fight of faith. Paul even required us to put on the whole armor of God because it is a spiritual battle in our life. Every day we are warring spiritually against the things we cannot see. But there is a war. 
The Bible says that every day there is darts that are being formed. Did you know there are nuclear things that are being formed today to drop us, to terrorize us, to threaten us? But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Come on. We have that shield of faith that protects us. Come on. We have a mighty army and a host of angels that are with us. Praise the Lord. The Bible says I have goodness and I have mercy. Follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, my chief priest, stands before me. Hallelujah. And anything that tries to hit me has to go through him first. Thank you, Jesus. He gives me the power to hold up this shield of faith. He gives me the power of my word, which is positive word, which is convicting word, which is changing word, with the sword of the spirit. He gives me my shoes to put on to walk by faith and not by sight and to bring peace to these generations. He tells me to tighten up my walk. Give me that belt of truth. Speak truth and not a lie to people. Come on, somebody. Speak that truth and tighten up your life. Hallelujah. If there's some things that need to be taken out, take them out in the name of Jesus. Tighten up your life. Tighten up that truth in your life. Come on. Hallelujah. What else did I miss? Breastplate, shield of faith, sword, helmet of salvation. He wants you to get that stinking thinking out of your life. Come on, somebody. I was once poor, but now I'm rich. Come on. I was once bound, but now I've been found. Hallelujah. I was once blind, but now I can see. Take that out. He put that helmet of salvation. I am being saved today because God is for me. Who can be against me? Come on. Give the Lord a great hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I call you healed in the name of Jesus. I feel better already, Pastor Kim. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Close your Bibles and close your notebooks. It is offering time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What a blessing and what a blessing and what a blessing. Well, we have been given and just surrendering our tithe and our offering to the Lord. What a blessing and what a blessing. We are blessed to have and to help my father with his, with his to-go business. We are blessed every week to bring our tithe of our business. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. We are blessed to bring that to the house of God. Hallelujah. We are so blessed that Pastor Kim and I have seen the blessing of tithing, and we've seen the blessing of giving. Come on, somebody. Firsthand, your tithers, firsthand understand that, that, that blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And so as, as we firsthand understand it, Lord, I just declare in the name of Jesus, you're waking up a generation right now to see the blessing of milk and honey, the victory and the blessing of their tithe and of their offering. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the gifts of seeds of faith in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Surrender your seed as an act of love and faith and bless the name of the Lord. Come now and give. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And open the eyes of the blind. There's no Darkness will shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, and none like you. I can move away, I got a stronger, I do a higher than me. I got a sweeter, awesome power I got. I got I got it greater, I got it stronger, God, you are higher than me, I got it sweeter, awesome and power, I got it, I got it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our offering containers right now by faith. Father, we lift up these containers by faith and we say thank you for every seed given, every tithe, Lord, released by faith in obedience. Lord, we know your blessing is upon this seed. And Lord, everyone that's in this place, Lord, I just declare a blessing upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we surrender our hearts to you, our love to you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Come on, give the Lord a great hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless everybody. What a blessing to be just in the house of God this Super Soul Sunday. I know you're probably going to be with family this weekend or this afternoon. Just remember, keep God in the midst of your conversations. Keep his love in the midst of everything in your life. 
and you'll live like a champion. Amen. I want to release just a few announcements to us all. We're so blessed that that God has assembled men in this church to just reunite and be a blessing. And on the 27th of February, mark your calendars. It's already on our church website. March, excuse me, February 27th, 10 o'clock this morning. That morning, we're going to be having another men's breakfast and a men's outreach. It's just to resharpen each other and reunite as men, have a good Bible teaching, and love on each other. So that's February 27th. What a blessing. Amen. At 10 a.m. We'll greet each other in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Happy Super Soul Sunday. Declare the blessings over your life. And we'll see you Wednesday. And you stay the same to the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in in the morning. And when the ocean breaks, because I know that you love me, your love never fails. Your love never fails. When you're strong in the water's deep, I'm not alone in these open seas. Your love never fails. The chasm is far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. And you stand the same through the ages. Your love there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the ocean rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Every step that I take, every move that I